I've just been catching up on comments on my videos. It's the first time since I got back from being away. So it's like about five days. I don't go in and check every day because there are lots of great comments out there, but there are some that are not, and it gets a bit depressing. There are some very strange people out there. I've had my fair share of weirdos and low-level stalkers. And some people really hate it when you put your life on camera. I did this as a bit of a project. It started as a project back about a year and, well, getting on for two years ago now. Just because I needed something different. And it's serving and has served its purpose. And I know that a lot of people enjoy that normalness, that day to dayness. Uh, particularly when you are isolated or you know you see what's going on in the world and you just need to get a little bit of a balance and I know that some of the videos I make are really helpful and really useful for different people and that's why I try to make a range of things as well and all the things that I do they're not done especially for this channel everything I do really is my life and my life is not that interesting and lots of people's lives aren't that interesting but sometimes some of the things that I do just add a little bit of joy to someone else's life people like the road trips they like the hikes they like this sort of talk where they get to be reminded they that they're not the only one who's feels like the world's going mad and you know, I try to give tips and advice on things like money and finances and budgeting and shopping and stuff because that's what I do and that's how I manage to keep my budgets low and I manage to have a relatively small income but still earn more than I spend. And I think one of the problems is that people will watch one video, they'll make a crass comment having not taken the time to watch any other videos and therefore have an idea of what's going on and that's just sheer laziness you know and I if I join a channel if I see a video that comes up in my feed somehow and I watch it I enjoy it um, I will then go and look at other videos and I will try to understand a little bit more about what's going on sometimes some of the channels that I find have been going for years and I've completely missed that person's life journey to where they are now and I think it's just that level of intolerance that some people have yeah my life's not that interesting it's not always that fun it's not always that joyous as somebody said the other day but that's that's life life is like that for a lot of people and sometimes it's grounding and it's helpful and it helps to keep a little bit of sanity when you know that you're not the only one. I like aspects of my life. I like the autonomy I have. I like that I have been able to choose not to work full time for somebody else. Um, yes, my income is piecemeal, but I'm earning more than I spend. I am, I've always been what my family call thrifty or frugal. I've always had that mindset. That's just me. It's just in me I don't know where it comes from because it's certainly not in my background my parents and my brother's family there's nothing frugal about them it is just the way I am and the life that I have lived since I first left home at 18 which was 30 odd years ago I have learned slowly over the years how how to be better at getting by and it's just the way I am. I am the person that I am. There's nothing on my channel that is fake. Um, I am the person that you see. I am. I do the things that I say I do. And I live the life that I live. And there are people with far worse lives than me out there. And if you really hate seeing someone's normal life, go and find an influencer channel. There's plenty of those out there. Plenty of fake channels full of fake happiness and pretending videos and there are other channels that are amazing and happy and whatever and they are genuine so go and find them I follow a range of channels 
some of them are just like mine some of them are similar to mine but in different scenarios I follow people who live on canal boats in vans people who do frugal lifestyling like me um, I follow people who live in houses who travel the world I follow the odd bit of politics in a less political way um, and every so often I will ditch a channel because I just can't take it anymore because it's like reading the news it's like sometimes you need to get rid of the channels and sometimes I will find new channels and add those and I'll watch a few of those and if that sticks I will stick with that so if you don't like what my channel does why on earth are you here? it's very confusing because if your life was happy and interesting and you didn't need to make snarky comments on my channel it's a bit complicated I think because if you were a happy person you wouldn't need to make comments like that would you you'd be you'd be off doing something else I guess um, and that's only it's only occasional that I get comments like that from people that are clearly not as happy as they pretend to be because they've got the time to write a nasty comment then there must be something else going on but a lot of what I say rings true with people and other people have constructive comments and criticisms always happy with the criticism if it makes sense and if it's another viewpoint always interested in that lots of interesting comments coming through about the solar panels and things like that these are things that bother me you know I'm not just saying this because oh let's get a few more likes in let's make an extra bit of money on YouTube this stuff's going to affect me and I don't lay every single aspect of my life out on the line because you know that there's other people's privacy and you know there are weirdos out there who will do their utmost to track you down so you have to be a little bit careful anyway so I'm going to wrap up here because um, I've got some other videos that I want to do I want to do one about financial wellness not using that as a as a group guru influencer type thing but I read an article recently on financial wellness and discovered that's what I already do so I thought I'd do a little post about my thoughts on that um, just simple things that can help you feel less anxious about money and this is something that I've been doing since I moved here over six years ago and I don't feel anxious about money ever because I've put into place everything that I can and I feel in, in control as much as I can possibly be in control so I will do that uh, whether that's coming next or further down the line I'm not sure I'm running out of videos to post uh, I usually try and keep a nice little backlog so I'm not under pressure but um, because I've been away and I've not had much time to record uh, I'm running out of stuff so I need to get cracking no hikes this week uh, weather is naff <laughs> and I've got too many cleaning jobs on so hopefully fingers crossed for the weather next week and we'll see how we get on. So um, I'll speak to you soon. Hope you're having a good week. Um, and stay safe. Have you noticed how when everything turns a bit crazy in the world the media like to scare you even more? So I mentioned on my last post about how clickbaity a lot of the news is but the headlines are designed to scare you and you may not even go in and read the article because usually the article is nothing to do with the headline it's designed to terrify you and then if you go in and you read the article you'll find it's completely different but a lot of people probably won't a lot of people will just look at the headline and go oh my god they're taking away universal credit or they're going to um, tax drivers 
a thousand pounds a year just to be on the road and a lot of that has now come out of Labour taking over and the oncoming budget and all the rumours around that nothing's been verified uh, so you won't know until the actual budget happens what's actually going to be in it but it doesn't stop people speculating and trying to wind us up and make us click on headlines etc etc the other thing that happens and I noticed this particularly during Covid but probably because it's the most recent thing is when Covid was kind of probably while it was actually happening I don't remember doing any of this but there were a lot of movies a lot of apocalypse movies a lot of disaster movies and a lot of movies where contagion of humans was the centre of the story and it doesn't really help when you're in the middle of a pandemic to watch films that kind of show you the disaster that can happen and the other night BBC4 which is just the weirdest place to show films was showing Threads and if you don't know what Threads is it was a, a film made in the 1980s at a time when there was all sorts of turmoil going on and it was a drama of what would happen in the UK if there was a nuclear bomb and if if you are worried about what's going on in the world at the moment with Russia and Iran and Israel and a fear of what's going on with China and all these things if you had watched that that could have put the fear of God into you because it's quite graphic for its time and pretty terrifying if you think that that's the way things are going to go and the war it is centered around is Russia and the USA so it's pretty reliable it, I think uh, Iran is mentioned and Mossad and things like that and so it's been really carefully chosen to be shown at a time when all these things are going on where we've got UK Ukraine and Russia where we've got Israel and we've got uh, ongoing problems with you know is USA gonna get involved all this sort of thing who's gonna get involved who isn't and it's incredibly irresponsible to add programs like this people are already doom scrolling they're already looking at these clickbaity headlines and looking further afield for information but also you know we've got a new government but people are afraid of what's going to come uh, are people going to you know lose their incomes their savings uh, their pensions all this sort of thing there's a lot of uncertainty going around people are really really worried and for a channel to then put on films which exacerbate that and make it worse and make you more and more afraid of what might happen just seems so irresponsible what is the matter with these people I know it's all about ratings, you know, everyone wants to get the viewers. But it's just so irresponsible. And they also put these things on pretty late at night. So in the evening, your brain works in a different way. You're, you're getting tired, you're supposed to be going to bed, and your brain overreacts to everything. That's why late night on online shopping is a thing because people aren't as focused they're not as careful and they will watch stuff like this in a kind of semi-zombie state and they'll have gone to work this morning the night the morning after the film was on and it's probably preying on their minds so I wish media companies, TV channels that are showing this stuff and dredging all these old things up 
and these nasty little online newspapers like Birmingham Live is the worst who are putting in these hideous clickbaity headlines that bear no relation to facts whatsoever and they just want to get clicks and you go into these pages where you've seen these awful headlines and the story is nothing about the headline and it's just rammed full of nasty advertising like Timu and it's just so gross. So please don't watch this stuff if your anxiety levels are up. Stop looking at nasty news sites like Google News who put the worst possible trash in front of you. If you have a habit of using Google News as your news feed, you can edit out news sources that you don't like. So there are certain ones that I have blocked so they don't appear in my feed. But I've now stopped looking at Google News again because it's just an absolute car crash. It's just so gross. Please Google, sort it out. So I'm going to have lunch. It is Thursday. I have done my last clean of the week, which would have been on Tuesday, but it is now on Thursday. And I'm just heating up some of yesterday's smoked batter rice, which I cooked yesterday so that I didn't have to cook lunch from scratch today because it's now like two o'clock so I'm not going over the top. Uh, boiling the kettle for a nice cup of tea and um, it's a lovely sunny day today. I could have gone hiking today. So annoying. Never mind. Have a good day. This morning it's Friday the 11th of October and it is a gorgeous, crisp, sunny autumn morning. It's six degrees at the moment and it's half past ten and the temperatures have really been dipping this last week or so. It was three degrees last night and you could feel it. I had to get my hot water bottle out. So I've decided to take the opportunity to come out to the cemetery because I've had a request on find a grave and I thought I would take advantage of the gorgeous weather. It's absolutely spectacular here today. If I'd known the weather that was going to be this amazing I might have gone on a hike but it's already starting to become a bit overcast and I was a bit slow getting out this morning because I'm really starting to slow down. <laughs> now the weather's changing. I didn't realise I was quite so sensitive to it. So in the summer, up at seven, wide awake, great. This morning it was like half past eight when I finally got up. It's really slow. It's so dark in the mornings. So I'm going to go look for this plot letter and then find this grave. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I read a vaguely funny article on the online last night. There was a glitch in the um, in the weather reporting yesterday. And I'll put a, a paragraph up from it here because it's vaguely funny. <laughs> 14,000 mile per hour winds in the north. That would have finished us all off, wouldn't it? Anyway, so that obviously didn't happen. I was thinking as I went to my cleaning job yesterday and being a bit like, uh, having to do this job that I don't particularly enjoy. I don't mind the others so much, but this one is taking me time to settle into because it's the new one. It's like, oh dear. And I often think about how lucky I am that I get to pick and choose my work 
you know, if I didn't want to do the cleaning jobs, if I really didn't want to do the cleaning jobs, I could just um, say I'm not doing them anymore. There's nothing forcing me to do it. I could get by, but it just makes life easier financially. And um, I often think back to my ancestors. You know, some of them were very lucky and got to do jobs they loved. My granddad was a metropolitan police officer. My dad always did the job he loved all his life. He was an electrical engineer. But if I don't have to go very far back through my family tree to see that there were lots of people doing jobs because they have to, because you have to work and you have to put a roof over your feet, over your head and feed and clothe your children. And people, mostly men, back in the times that I'm looking at, would do jobs because it was the family trade or because it's what their father did and it was an inroad into a job like mining and agricultural labour, things like that. And they probably didn't find the jobs really great fun. But a job's a job. And people just went through the motions, you know. Children grew up, they went to school and learnt the basics. Then they went out to work and you just did a job until you dropped dead. And our attitude towards work has changed a lot in recent generations where people get to pick and choose. And we now have in place a benefit system which means that if you don't want to do a job that you don't like, money may be put back into your pocket to enable you to not do it. There is no, well if you haven't got a job you're literally going to be on the street. Doesn't happen to most people now. And so people get to be a lot more picky. They don't have to take whatever job. And particularly now where, I mean not now at all, I mean a lot of people did jobs that didn't pay enough to live on. So the husbands would work, the wives would work in whatever they could get back then. And as soon as the children were old enough, they went out to work. And every income went into the pot and paid for the rent and the food and whatever basics you needed to pay for. And most people did that because that's what you're supposed to do. But we are... I suppose lucky now that we get to pick and choose. We don't have to do things. And that has changed the attitude towards work. You know, the news and the governments keep talking about all these job vacancies that we have at the moment. But a lot of them aren't fit for purpose. A lot of them will not pay enough to pay rent and food and basic bills, not luxuries, but the basic necessities because wages don't rise with inflation. So, you know, most things are, are, aren't covering the basics. So if you're doing like 60 hour a week at a minimum wage job that doesn't pay your basics, why would you do it? Simple as. Look at these gorgeous autumnal trees. started to rain. I thought today might have been a missed opportunity for hiking but I'm thinking otherwise now because if it's like that here I can't imagine what it's like up on the moors. I have two hikes that I want to achieve before the weather becomes impossible but I'm just waiting for that right weather on a day when I'm free when I can go and do it. of little birds in that tree peeping away and I'm wondering what they are. They're going to be I wonder if they're 
uh, gold crests. We get gold crests up here. I've seen gold crests in, in this cemetery. They're amazing. It's a very tiny little bird up there. I think they might be gold crests. They've just flown across. Um, but they're very hard to see. In the autumn we get the red wings. Come for the berries in the holly bushes over the other side. I saw them last year. So I need to find this plot. So yeah, so you know, that's my thoughts on how employment and jobs has changed. And at what point do people who advertise jobs and can't get them filled because the pay is so dreadful, at what point does Either the companies give and put the wages up so that they're livable wages, or do people so desperate for work crack and start doing jobs that don't pay the bills because a job's a job? There doesn't seem to be any middle ground. Neither side will budge. I don't know whether it's just a stalemate that goes on forever where you have X number of jobs that do exist, not the fake ones, but the ones that do exist. At what point do... Uh, is it just a constant stalemate of lots of unfilled jobs and lots of people not willing to take them because they don't pay enough? I don't know. don't know where that changes, or if it ever changes. But I did read somewhere that we're just entering a, what they call a prolonged, unsettled time. I think that is something like five years, which sounds about right to me. Oh, they might be long-tailed tits, those birds. I've just seen a load of them fly over. Yeah, probably long-tailed tits. But it's a fabulous place here. It's incredibly peaceful. There's a very low level hum of traffic in the background from the motorway. But it's you don't get that many people here. We don't get any trouble here. It's tucked away on the edge, so nobody really comes here except for the obvious reasons. And it's surrounded by thick woodland, so the nature here is wonderful. And although the lawns are very tidy, as you can see, the whole perimeter is left to do what it does, which is great, because nature really takes advantage of that. So I'm going to go and find this grave that I need to photograph for this relative who can't get here to see it. Oh, there's a buzzard. You probably can't see it out there. There's a buzzard circling. I don't know if he's on the screen there. There's a plane. That's not him. <laughs> Can you see the buzzard? here nut hatches. It's fabulous here, it really is. Great to do a little bit of bird watching here. Right, 
just going to find this grave and then head home. I dug up my second batch of potatoes the other day. This year has been shocking for veg. No run of beans. My second lot of broad beans didn't come to anything. Tomatoes haven't come to anything. Just when the weather should have been just spot on for growing stuff, uh, the, the, we lost the summer. Anyway, so <laughs> that is the sum of my second haul of potatoes um, really depressing actually but these are going into a casserole today so um, waste not want not right so it's Sunday morning and my routine's been a little bit different today I was expecting a large delivery from Amazon which I'm going to be talking about in other videos. And I ordered this thing on Friday because it said it would deliver on Monday, which fitted really well with my schedule. And then a couple of hours after I ordered it, it said it was going to deliver on Saturday, which meant I was going to have to move around a few things, but was doable. And then half an hour after that, I got another update that said it's going to deliver on Sunday morning. And it was delivering Sunday morning between 7.30 and 9.30 in the morning. So I got up at 7.30 this morning because I had no idea how much um, information I was going to get in advance because I've never done an order like this. It's with an external company. So they were really good about keeping me up to date and there was an app and I could look at the map and everything and they were coming from all the way over in Leeds to deliver this thing. So at 7.30 I'm looking at the map and they're still in Leeds and I'm thinking oh, I could have stayed in bed an extra hour. But because I didn't know until last night what the delivery slot was going to be because that's what they do, they update you the night before, uh, I decided to do my weekend double clean yesterday uh, because I didn't know whether they were going to give me a short o a delivery window today or whether they were just going to say we'll turn up Sunday and you've got to be in all day. Anyway, so I did that yesterday, so today is now clear. So they actually turned up at just before 9 o'clock this morning. So that meant I still had time to get over to Morrison's and do my Sunday morning yellow sticker haul as I normally do. Nothing in Morrison's. The only things that were there were things that I don't need anything of at the moment. There was some broccoli, there were some carrots, um but I don't need either of those at the moment. I've got a ton of all that stuff in at the moment. And all the other things weren't what I would consider cheap prices. So some of the yellow sticker prices, because the original price of the item is so high, the yellow sticker prices are still too high. And they're for things I don't normally buy. So I'm only going to buy something that I don't normally buy if it's really cheap. And there wasn't anything. So I've come back empty-handed Sunday morning. Uh, so instead, I am going to be making um, a video about this delivery. I'm going to do it as a separate set of um, videos because it's it's kind of a product review, but it's an ongoing one. So, yeah, you're just going to have to watch out for that. Sunday morning, really brisk out, really chilly. Only six degrees when I went out this morning. 
and it's about 13 degrees in the flat and now I'm up moving around dressed and whatever it doesn't feel so bad it feels usually colder first thing when you first get out of a nice warm bed but it was really it's um it's a relatively clear sky out the sun's trying to get through very still no wind so it was that lovely crisp frosty smell that you get so it was really nice to get out and just walk over the road and then back again I got to drink some water I've now got myself a cup of tea and now I'm going to go and start having a look at my delivery and doing videos about that so I've got a little project to do which is fun so we'll see how that goes I don't think there's much else going to happen today for Sunday because all the things I normally do on Sunday I did yesterday so we'll see how the weather goes and I might go out and have a little stroll about um, but I have a, a ton of admin stuff to do here. I've got videos to edit that I want to get up and running. Um, I've recently done a review, an October review of surveys income, where I'm making my money from with online surveys, which I wanted to update because a few things have changed this year in terms of apps and stuff like that. And it's a relatively quick and simple way to earn extra income. So if you need to top up your income because you're a little bit short, maybe you're not able to work and you need to find ways to make money. Um, that's why I've done this because, um, you know, it works for me. It all goes into the same pot, doesn't it? So I'm going to get on. Nice warm cup of tea and I'm going to be productive, even for a Sunday. Catch you later. Bye bye. This afternoon I have decided to make mince pies. <laughs> now I am not a fan of doing Christmas too early. I've seen mince pies in the supermarket since August and it really irritates me. We haven't even got Halloween out of the way with yet and already Christmas is there in the store. Um, but Although most people associate mince pies with Christmas, I guess because that's when you can buy the ingredients and the products, I like the taste of mince pies full stop. So I will often make things with mince meat throughout the year. Often I will make a, what I call a mince pie roll, where I'll make up um, some pastry, lay the mince meat in like a, a Swiss roll roll it up and then stick it in the oven and that's good fun. Today I've just decided to make mince pies because I can. Um, so I'm going to let you see me do that. I don't have any other desserts in at the moment at all. There is literally, I've got one banana, that is all I've got. And I wanted to make something rather than, you know, just wanted to be a bit more um, home cooked, so to speak. So let's get this going. Uh, what else do I need? I forgot what I need. I am cheating with my pastry this time. I still have a bunch of these just rolls in the freezer. I cut them in half because one's too much for me. And then every so often I'll get one out and use that. It's quicker and easier. It's less messy. And... Um, I thought I would use one. So that's been defrosting overnight and I've left it out to get to room temperature. So that's my pastry. Just need to flour my surface. Get this nice and coated and then just knead it soften it up a bit where it's been a bit of a brick in the freezer it's nice and defrosted though and then what I'm going to do because I am making mince pies is I am just going to cut this in half 
because obviously I need some of it for the bottom of the mince pies and then the other half for the tops. So we'll put aside the top, give this a nice little knead and I'm going to find my rolling pin. I'm just going to roll this out as thin as I can get it, get the money's worth out of it, because the idea is that this will be kind of like dessert for the next four or five days hopefully. I try to ration my dessert based foods. For me very often it's just a case of I just need a little something because I try to make healthier meals. So lunch today was a big old stir fry with as much veg as I could fit in the pan and a tin of tomato sardines which I divided up, well I kind of mushed it up with a with a fork and then tipped the whole lot in and that is lunch and dinner today. So that's pretty much my diet for the day because I still do the intermittent fasting which means that I don't have breakfast and then I try not to eat too late into the evening. Some weeks it's great, sometimes I fail miserably. Um, I have phases of not fussed about food and then suddenly I will just descend into I want to eat everything in the kitchen and that's why I don't usually keep snacks to hand because I will just eat myself stupid if given the opportunity and I'm afraid I've always been like that it's a constant battle right so I've laid that out nice and thin I have my tray for let's put that on there. And I'm just going to find my cookie cutter top and bottom. There we are. So I can three, six, nine. I could, potentially I can make twelve. So the big cookie cutter is the base because obviously the base needs to come up and round to make the sides as well. do this very often um, but it's really good fun <laughs> I like putting the shapes into the holes and then filling it up and then putting the tops on this pastry is really easy to use I only buy it when I see it on yellow sticker and you won't see any for six months of the year and then suddenly it'll be like an entire box of it is there and I will take as much as I can fit in a freezer, which generally isn't that much. And I don't want to have too much because otherwise it becomes too tempting to make even more food. So, that's that. I'll do the tops in a minute. Next we are going to... This is mince meat from last year. This stuff lasts forever. It's good till August 2025. I bought it last Christmas, well, yeah, last Christmas, January. Oh, there we go. I love mincemeat so much. Um, yeah, so, after Christmas, they've overloaded the shelves with too much cooking stuff, too many ingredients, nobody buys it, 
and then they have to discount it like crazy um, after Christmas because as soon as Christmas has gone everyone loses interest in Christmas and is moving on to the January sales so I go in and I will buy a load of this stuff because these last for ages in the cupboard and it means that I can have a little taste of Christmas all year because I really do like mince meat. So one teaspoon per tart. These are not deep fill, these are quite shallow these ones so that's why I'm only putting one teaspoon in because otherwise it'll overflow and it'll be all over the place when I cook them. looks like very complicated cooking but it really isn't. This is very simple because the pastry has already been done it's very quick and easy to put together. So that's that and I'm even going to have a teaspoon. Oh so good. Right, use about half a jar, <coughs> put that away that will last in the cupboard for ages. Now, there they are. I just need to make the tops. So, we're going to do exactly what we did before. Except we're going to use the slightly smaller cookie cutter. Because it only has to fit on the top. So that's that, and then we're going to roll it out. So it needs 12 of this size. Now, you can see some of this. We're in out of room. Just going to pop these on the top and just tuck them round. Now, I know that people brush these with egg to seal them in. I don't bother because I'm lazy and because it's just another ingredient that I have to sort out. It doesn't really make much difference anyway. I'm not a high-end cook. I'm only making stuff for me, so it doesn't really matter. One or two of these, I think, are going to explode in the oven. That one, I think, well, you end up with a bit of the juice coming out. And then it swims around on the top. But that's okay. pies ready to go. Um, right so they're ready. Now I have I always have some dough over because you never want to run out halfway through making your mince pies but also 
because I'm obviously I've made the dough quite the pastry quite thin to make sure there's enough to go around so what I now have is a nice little leftover and what I'm going to do just for fun because we don't waste anything I'm just going to roll that out a little bit use the rest of this flour I don't want to waste that either there we go and now I'm going to put a little bit more mince meat in the middle that around like that and I'm going to make the mince pie roll as well put that on like that and then I'm just going to get explode everywhere because I haven't really sealed it in but it's just a little fun thing just to use up the remains so there we have my extra mini mince pie roll which I can eat when it comes out of the oven and that's it um, I usually whack my oven on at about 180 put things in and when they look done it's done so there you have it mince pies and a mince pie roll with the remains. That's it, mince pie's done. Happy Sunday!